Thanks for watching TechWiki. Click the subscribe button, then enable notifications with the bell icon so you won't miss any future videos. Another autumn means it's time for lots of things. 18 hours of football every weekend, stores trying to shove pumpkin flavored junk food down your throat, and another iPhone. But wait, something's different. This year, we're not getting one, but two distinct Apple smartphones. The iPhone 8 and the iPhone 8 Plus. Oh wait, also the 10. That's three. And by the way, no, we don't know what happened to the iPhone 9. Maybe they got their naming inspiration from another tech company. It wouldn't be the first time. Anyway, let's dive right into the features so you can decide if the new iPhone models might be sensible upgrades for you. Both models are available in either 64 or 256 gigabyte capacities, a welcome change after Apple developed a bit of a reputation for offering lower capacities than competing flagship smartphones. And although some features are simply carried over from the iPhone 7, such as the same camera lenses, the same IP67 dust and water resistance, and the same lightning connector, despite hopes that Apple would switch to the open USB-C standard, <gasps> There are enough new features here to raise some eyebrows, including industry standard wireless Qi charging. So at least you won't have to fumble around with said lightning cord when you need some more apple juice. Okay, bad puns aside, Apple is also promising their highest quality photos yet, with the rear camera rocking a new, larger image sensor. You can learn more about why that's important up here. But the basic idea is that this will allow more light to enter the phone, resulting in more detailed shots. And Apple has also said it delivers better low light performance and dynamic range than ever before. And speaking of light, the new iPhones go a step beyond automatic control of the screen brightness and will also attempt to adjust the color of the display, changing it on the fly based on your ambient light conditions. Apple is also promising a wider color gamut for the LCD display. But if looks don't matter as much as uh, what's on the inside to you, you won't be disappointed either. The iPhone 8 and 10 both come with the new A11 SoC, and early reports are indicating that it is crushing its Android rivals in synthetic tests like Geekbench. But what are the extras you're getting if you opt for the significantly more expensive iPhone 10? Well, it gets a few new design features that we haven't yet seen on an iPhone. First up, Apple has hopped on to the bezel-less, or rather, almost bezel-less hype train, even going as far as to ditch their iconic home button. It's been replaced by a swipe up, so finding your way around the phone might take some getting used to. It also gets an OLED display running at a somewhat wacky 1125p resolution. Still the highest, though, that any iPhone has offered. Apple also claims that this display has a million to one contrast ratio. And while that number may or may not be fudged, which you can learn more about here, this is still easily the highest contrast display that Apple has ever released as part of a smartphone. It also boasts the largest screen of any iPhone ever, with a 5.8 inch display and a battery that Apple says can deliver up to 21 hours of talk time versus 14 for the iPhone 8. Well, okay, Linus, that's great and all, but these are actually all features that we've had on Android phones for a while now. Is Apple offering us anything that's actually new? Well, yes, actually. The big selling point in that regard is Face ID which for now is an iPhone 10 exclusive. Instead of the Touch ID technology that's been with us since the iPhone 5, you can instead unlock your phone and make purchases by using the front camera, which maps a 3D model of your face with over 30,000 data points, a more advanced solution than the 2D face recognition on the Galaxy S8, which Apple is claiming is much more secure than Touch ID. Unless, of course, you have an identical twin. As a side note, this tech also lets you record and send animated messages to your friends using one of Apple's baked-in 3D characters. They are going to sell so many of these based on that feature alone. 
at least assuming anyone can afford them. Obviously, new iPhones aren't cheap in general, and this is especially true with Apple releasing the super high-end iPhone X in tandem with the more mainstream 8 and 8 Plus. So you can expect to pay at least 700 US dollars and as much as 1150, depending on exactly which model you want and which capacity. Which gets me thinking, maybe Face ID could be updated to let Siri know to you know, comfort you if you look stressed out from all that credit card debt. Do you have two computers and like two sets of keyboards and mice to control them? Well, Synergy lets you consolidate that. It's a software tool that lets you share one keyboard and mouse between multiple computers. And it even works cross-platform. So if you have like a Mac that you use for development and a Windows machine that you use for gaming, Bam! You can just use the same peripherals for both, seamlessly moving between them with your mouse cursor. And it's got tons of other great features as well, including clipboard sharing, uh, dragging and dropping between the computers, the ability to set up custom hotkeys, and more. Synergy is available in basic and pro versions with the latter including SSL encryption to secure the data sent between the computers. Synergy is offering a 50% discount to TechWiki viewers, so just click on the link in the video description below to check it out. So thanks for watching guys, like, dislike, check out our other channels, leave a comment with video suggestions, and subscribe so you don't miss any of our videos. Also the bell icon.